Yeah, um, so hi. So my name is Ruben. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to share is a, bit, a little bit about um, what I did uh, last year. Um, I took some time off to travel. Um, so while traveling, I was trying to do some uh, freelancing work uh, just to supplement my travel expenses. So uh, I got a phone call from my friend. He asked me, hey, you know, do you want to do a small project together? And um, he's new to Rails. So I was like, sure, why not? You know? so, so the thing is about um, Jenkins and Rails Engine, but it's more like working remotely with uh, new Rails developers. OK? So um, the situation is um, I have two uh, friends. There's newly converted Rails developers. Uh, they are from a Java background and a PHP background. But they know MVC pretty well. So I think it's quite easy for them to transit to Rails. Uh, more agile development. Basically, it's just uh, always a working uh, software. So the client is able to log into the staging server to see the latest updates, um, whatnot. Uh, working remotely, of course, um, because um, I'm traveling. Um, so this picture is uh, in, taken in Santorini. Um, the cat overtook my workplace. So the picture of them. Uh, and of course, low budget, um, because it's a small project. Uh, so there, there's still things that we need to work together with. So at the end of the day, we decided uh, So how we set up the environment. Um, basically, for project management, uh, we use Trello. Uh, so the client has access to Trello too. Uh, he'll be able to create cards, um, submit bugs, and whatnot. Um, Google Docs for basically all the um, documentation, um, whatever that my friend um, talks to the client, the minutes of meeting, whatever will be on Google Docs. Uh, communication is Slack. Um, CI is Jenkins. Um, so the purpose of Jenkins is to ensure that at least the staging server don't break because you know I'm dealing with a new Rails developer. We don't want as much as possible to not have more bugs that is needed. And then um, Alessian for the Git repo. So moving forward, um, a bit of Trello. So this is basically how we split the cards. Um, client will always um, submit cards on the left hand side. And then to do, doing, done, review and complete is when the client were to look at the done and then move it to review and complete. So that's how we roughly keep track of uh, how's the progress like. Okay. Um, Slack, so basically, um, obviously, Trello is integrated with Slack. So you can, so the client is able to uh, move cards, um, do screenshots, and yep, so that's uh, how we talk to one another. So every time when I log in, I need to know the status. Um, basically, I log in here, and um, there's a build management. So Jenkins, uh, whatever build will go to this. So this is like my to go place to know the status of the server or to know what is what's happening in the project. So um, Jenkins, um, so this is the build pipeline. So the first pipeline is uh, bundle install. Um, then you run our spec and test coverage. Um, the test coverage is more so for my, more so for us to write enough tests so that you will not fail. Uh, so we put the test coverage at 80%. So every time when the test coverage drops below 80% of the entire application, uh, it fails. So kind of try to force us to write more spec to cover the application. Uh, code analysis, and then lastly, to deploy to staging. So every time when you push to um, a branch, um, this pipeline will run. And every time it fails, it will alert um, Slack. And then uh, somebody else has to go and fix. Or rather, usually, I'm the one that go and fix. OK? Um, when I have internet, of course. And uh, a little bit of code coverage. So this is uh, our code, uh, simple code. Correct. So this is what we use. Um, so in Jenkins, you're able to see everything. Um, what is tested, what is not tested, how much percentage, blah, blah, blah. Um, so code analysis. Um, true be told, uh, we don't really use much of this. Um, it's just there so that if there's anything that is really, really bad, uh, we can go in here to see. Um, yeah, so this is code analysis. So this whole CI is to make sure that at least uh, when they do development, um, there's, there's certain check and procedures in place so that they won't push codes that will break staging and then the client won't be able to see anything at all. Okay, 
So uh, moving forward, uh, while we are developing, uh, we encounter some issues. Uh, so there will be, um, so what happened is, okay, maybe i explain a bit more about the app. So the app has uh, three parts to it. Um, there's an admin portal, which um, usually the management will go in to view reports uh, to basically they are admins so they can do everything. Okay, and then there's the API interface that interface with uh, Android application. Uh, and there's a main application where that's the regular users will go in and fill in data and whatnot. So there are three main apps. So initially when we first started off, uh, it was um, basically one big uh, Rails um, structure. And inside there we do namespacing. So you have um, the controller for main app, and controller for admin portal and um, API interface. But what happened is that um, it starts to get, uh, the view starts to get really crowded. Um, so we start to see things like, if it's this admin, display this. If it's not, then display that. And then it starts to get, um, the routes files are also getting more and more crowded. So it's really hard um, for all of us to develop on it because we tend to conflict with one another. So I did a bit of uh, research and found about um, Rails Engine. So Rails Engine is mini popular because device uh, use Rails Engine. Um, Rails Admin also use Rails Engine. So there's a few that use it. So I went to do a little bit of research um, and try it out, you know, since this is a small project and, you know, it was good to learn something new. So with Rails Engine, um, this is what we get. Um, basically, it's MVC in each of the engine itself and then it's writing on a uh, Rails application. So in that case, my friend can work on the admin, I can work on the API. Um, the views does not uh, clash with one another. Um, it's good because uh, at the end of the day, what the client want was the admin portal and the main application to be two separate UIs. So when they log in, they can see the difference. Otherwise, it, it, they won't tell the difference whether am I in the admin, beside the URL, they can't tell the difference visually. So it's really good in that sense that uh, this Rails engine, so we split it up this way. Yep, <clears throat> but when you deal with Rails engine, uh, we have to consider a few facts. Like, um, so by default, Rails engine is built like a gem. So you just do, uh, in your gem file, you just include the Rails engine. But it doesn't, um, it kind of doesn't make sense because um, for gem, the idea is that you can put it into multiple other projects, right? But um, this is not exactly a gem by itself. It's more like refactoring. So, so it's either use a gem or you can initialize some boot. Uh, where should you put the spec file? Should you put everything in one main application? Or should you put individually in each uh, engine itself? And then how do you do testing? So uh, if you do a bit of Googling, you realize some decide to put it um, in one main application. Um, and some decided to put it into different engine itself. And generators, because I'm dealing with um, a lot of new, uh, two new Rails developers, so they, we tend to use like Rails, generate, controller, blah, blah, blah. And then it generates uh, the controller, it generates the, the spec files and the models and whatnot. So definitely the engine itself will also have to produce generators like that. So that's what, what, that was the thought process to how should we structure the Rails engine. So at the end of the day, uh, we decided to go uh, load and boot. So in the application, the RB, basically you just initialize the Rails engine and just run it by itself. Okay. And the next one is uh, generators. So um, thank God for Pivotal. Uh, even migration can be placed in the engine itself. So on the main application, if you do like a uh, rake db migrate, it actually takes whatever from the engine migration files too. So it's um, so you can split it, but yet you can do it in one line command, and it runs everything from the engine side perspective. And then you have the generators. Um, so we use our spec, and so within the engine itself, you can do real generate, and it generates the the codes that's available. So my friend will just have to go in and change accordingly. So that's how we implement it. And then at the end of the day, uh, the aspects are living in their own uh, real engine. So, um, so basically, you just write a rig file and just run all the aspect. Um, so basically, that uh, is placed in the CI, in the Jenkins part of it. So when Jenkins run, it runs the main application um, spec, it runs the interface spec, it runs the 
uh, app inspect. And that's how uh, the Jenkins work with this uh, aspect. So how did it turn out? Um, it turned out well. Um, at the end, there's uh, less overlapping of codes in the view. It's very nicely segregated. Um, the developer can work on one specific uh, vertical and not touch the other things. Um, there's no bottleneck for deployment of codes um, because it's run by Jenkins. So every time when they need to deploy something, he just push to Git. And the uh, build pipeline will automatically deploy everything. So um, even though when I'm not, OK, this is my flux. Oh, how do I? Sorry. Yeah. OK. Oh. Oh, yeah. So where were I? Yeah, no bottlenecks for deployment of codes. So deployment of codes, everything is done by Jenkins itself. So any, anybody can deploy. Um, so by the build process, uh, we ensure certain code quality. Um, there's cases where uh, the build break, and then it alerted my friend, and they realized that, oh, you know, I forgot to change a certain variable in the view. It's giving me a 500 error, and things like that. So it's nice to ensure some code quality. And that's also there's a clear separation for application. So, um, so for any, anybody else that wants to um, enter into the project, they can see the difference. So you can see the engine, and if they know where to look for, for the piece of code. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's it. Thank you. Um, so oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, I work in NCS. Um, but this project has nothing to do with um, my job. This is more like the things I do before my job. Yeah, so and by the way, we are hiring. <laughs> yep. Any questions for Ruben? Yeah. How do you deal with the uh, uh, shared components? Like, I assume that the sort of models will be shared between the admin and the main application interface. Does oh. Live in the main application? Yes, so if, the, if there's shared component, we put in the main application the under the lib folder. The lib folder, but how about models? Models you can call directly. Um, at the engine models, it's possible. So if your engine is admin portal, so be admin portal, colon, colon, whatever, model. There's no, there's no shared model between like the admin and the There is, there is, there is, there is. So there's no in the main application? Like users are also shared models, yeah. So they live in the main application, yeah. You mentioned that the views get uh, the views get uh, mm -hmm. uh, Could you run uh, layouts, since you're namespacing your controllers, yeah, you can. You also can. Actually, initially we did that, but um, what was the issue? The issue is that even at the the even for the CSS files, sometimes uh, we want to split nicely also. So that is also another thing. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, so what initially happened was there was a admin portal main uh, application controller and all the other all the other controllers inherit from from that right but then your view itself everything is in that one view folder right yeah so i think it's more of a structure issue um, if you code it in that way in, in the inheritance way it still can be done um, it's just that this is more clear separation Sorry? For now, it's, uh, I, I, when we did it, uh, it's completely separate. Yeah. And if you would want to share, where would you put it? Mm, if we, most, so what we decided is uh, if things that is shared, it should be placed in the main application. Yep. Besides on using um, Jenkins, there were there are hosted solutions like Travis CI, yeah. Circle CI. Mm, that's true. So why did you decide to uh, um, use Because um, so Jenkins is open source, uh, which means free. Uh, <laughs> so Travis CI, um, firstly, is paid unless you put it your code on GitHub, which is a client project, so you can't put the code on the GitHub. So in the end of the day because of budget constraint, um, and also something that I want to explore. 
yeah, I think that's also the 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 mentality behind. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, correct. So um, that's why uh, we didn't go with the, the jam perspective. So that's why we load uh, the engines on boot itself. Because the idea of a jam is it's just you're supposed to take it out and place it everywhere else. But it's not really that case, you know. It's more like refactoring the codes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. Do they exist as three separate repos or are they all in the same repo? All in the same repo. Okay. Yep. They are all in the same repo. So, yep. which countries do you visit your one year? <laughs> 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 one year traveling down the road. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so while I was doing this project, uh, I traveled for one year. Started with South America, and then uh, Europe, and then um, Turkey the Middle East area, and then to China, and then back to Southeast Asia. And that's one year. And yeah, that's how I survived with... No, this project, I think it went on about maybe six months. Okay. Yeah, six months. Okay. Yeah, but it's not, it's not like every day I sit down there and code, it's not, it's not like that. Yeah, that's why there's Jenkins there too, <laughs> to outsource some of the stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think I can tell you which country has a very bad internet connection. <laughs> I think I remember that more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay, if not, thank you.